Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Mountain View for OpenStack SV. This is Silicon Angle, Media is the Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. And I'm here with my next guest, Michael Miller, President of Strategy Alliance Marketing, Suze and, and uh, Kermesh. Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, okay. You got it. <laughs> Vice President of Product Marketing at Mirantis. Yeah, yeah. um, and Mirantis is the sponsor of the Cube for the next two days. I want to th first thank you guys for hosting us here at your event. It's been, yeah. We've been here every year. Thanks so much for your support. Yeah. Allow us to extract the signal from the noise. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. You guys okay, are so great. you guys are um, got some news. So let's get right to the news. I have a lot of things to talk about, certainly, sure. yeah. with, with uh, some of the deployment challenges out there mm -hmm. and what's going on in the market. Uh, what's the news? So let's talk about what you guys have announced on stage mm -hmm. today and get that out of the way. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. So, you know, just a few minutes ago on stage here at the event, uh, Boris Rensky and I announced a partnership between SUSE and Mirantis, by which SUSE is going to provide our enterprise Linux solutions mm -hmm. to Mirantis uh, for their end customers. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to work together on making SUSE Linux Enterprise Server a development plat platform at Mirantis so that we're mutually certifying and supporting one another. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to collaborate upstream yep. and work on optimizing our joint technologies mm -hmm. and really moving OpenStack forward for everybody. Mm -hmm. So how deep is the deal? I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, the younger generation doesn't know what a Barney deal is, but you know, some people say, oh, some yeah. things are just a Barney deal, we love each other. Yeah. But the, the true test in, in this world of open yeah. source is yeah. how deep you guys yeah. are with technology. So can one, you, can one you thing, share the deep depth of this? Yeah, sure, so, so one thing to keep in mind is Mirantis is only an open stack. We, we focus on cloud, yeah. right? That's, that's our kind of pure play focus, right? Um, and we don't ship Linux distributions. That's, that's not really yeah. our, our core, um, that's not something we do. And SUSE is a natural kind of partner to be that Linux um, you know, kind of foundation for us. And having SUSE you know, working with us, you know, also working on the SUSE Linux uh, as, the, uh, as a platform for Linux, uh, running OpenStack, right? Uh, and also they have an extended offering called Expanded Support which actually increases the, the footprint uh, of Linux, including Red Hat as well as CentOS. You Correct. want to say a couple of words about that? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, obviously, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, we believe is the best enterprise Linux operating system for OpenStack, whether that's SUSE's OpenStack distribution or Mirantis OpenStack distribution. And, and we believe that customers and our partners deserve choice and the freedom to choose at every level in the architecture. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for us, this partnership makes perfect sense. Yeah. Choice is one thing, but they, what they really want is bulletproof, right? So, right. so let's, let's, because this seems like and this is kind of where this is going. Yeah, exactly. You want yeah. stability yes. at the Linux level. Yes. A lot of stuff going on with the kernel. Yeah. You don't want to just spend resources, let these guys right. decouple from your business, but they do it for you. Right. Right. They support you in an extended way. Yep. You then Correct. bring that to your customers. Yeah, Am so I getting that right? Yeah, yep. so, and the other thing that um, Michael mentioned is about collaborating upstream to get Mirantis OpenStack and SUSE Linux, you know, working well together. To your point, is you know deeply integrated, working well yeah. together, so our customers get that experience. So in the, the end, complexity right? issue yeah. that that we've been hearing, you guys yeah. been yeah. harping on this now for three years now yeah. since I've been hearing you guys talk about that. Yeah. Mirantis can be a one-stop shop mm -hmm. for the enterprise that doesn't want to have to deploy a ton of R and D bodies at, yeah, yeah. at doing OpenStack. Mm -hmm. They want to do enough smart resources, but yeah. they want to back up the Mirantis truck, if you will, right. and bring some open stuff. Uh, one number to call, right? Uh, and then we take on L1 and L2 support, so any cloud level issues come to us first. All right, so give yeah. us the update on yeah. that model. Yeah. What is yeah. the current Mirantis yeah. offering for that use case? Because that still is out there. I hear that all the time from customers. When you know, you know you are out there, I've talked to them in the past. Look, I want OpenStack, I want an alternative, and I want the software around it because I might have Azure and Amazon and some data center stuff, but I'm going to need to start positioning myself to have some proprietary <laughs> or unique advantage in my data center or in the cloud. Mm -hmm. They want to, to get started. Take us through what you guys are offering that yeah, customer so today. Again, you know, we, we supply the distribution itself, the Mirantis OpenStack software, right? And that's the support we provide. But we tout ourselves as the pure play company, right? So it's about, again, flexibility and choice for the customer. And if they want to go build something proprietary or hook on some storage devices or mm -hmm. build their own networking on top of it, OpenStack is designed to be you know, open and flexible and pluggable from, from the ground up. 
and we reflect that philosophy, yeah. right? Uh, the OpenStack community philosophy is what our philosophy is. And that's why we call it pure play, whether it is Linux distribution support underneath or different kinds of uh, partner ecosystems that they want to plug in. Mm -hmm. All that is part of the ecosystem that we've been working on. Take right? us through mm -hmm. uh, some of the engagements you've had with your customers yeah. in their journey. Okay, they, they come in, yeah. they usually a phased approach, some pilots mm -hmm. to move to production. Yeah. Where are you guys now on your journey? Can you, can you share some data around, some anecdotal examples of, of, of kind of pegged the journey of yeah, your customers? Yeah, I mean, it usually starts with uh, some sort of what we call ADAs. ADAs are assessment design architecture type of sessions. Because mm -hmm. every cloud is unique, even though we'd like yep. to think otherwise. Yeah. Every customer has their own unique business needs, they have their own, own products and services, they want to go to market in a different way, they have different security requirements. So we tend to sit down and work with the customer about what that is all about, right? So that's where the requirements come in. Then we have an implementation phase, obviously we use Mirantis OpenStack software mm -hmm. to go build that all out. Uh, I mean, there are lots of examples, and public ones are AT&T and VW, are the two biggest customers that, that have deployed very large scale clouds using Mirantis as the expert, helping them through the journey. So think of this as a digital transformation for many of these companies. Right? And they're moving yeah. down that yeah. path to more production. More production environments, more operationalizing of their clouds. That is still a challenge, is right? Is bursting kind of like on the table? Is that in the conversation or is that more of get management visibility first, then figure out Get bursting? management visibility first, get the private cloud up and running, make sure it's successful, make sure that you're able to demonstrate business outcomes with what you have now. Public cloud and bursting is really phase two in my opinion. Yeah, right? automation's it's hard. Automation, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's really hard to do automation. It's very hard to do automation. Mike, I want to get your yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Obviously yeah. Linux sure. is mm. growing and changing, which is fantastic, and it's made a lot of people money and certainly created a lot of great innovations around Linux. Certainly as Linux goes to the cloud, which everyone, it's there. Um, you can't help but ignore Amazon's numbers for growth and performance. Azure's touting private cloud, yeah. VMware's out there, Google, I mean, everyone's out there. So the big guys are getting bigger and they have a lot of incumbent base to work from. So obviously they Microsoft, they have that office space and they're going to try to stick some stuff into their stack. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear that every vendor has their own stack and different approach. What are you guys hearing and, and what can you share to folks watching that kind of teases out the reality of the horses on the track, Amazon, Azure, and what's their approaches? What are some of the conversations in the community around this? Are people worried? Is it an opportunity? Is it, is it hype, is it real, is it different? Where do you, where do you guys differentiate? I know it's a big question, but just yeah. share any color around sure. the big guys. Well, from a, from a SUSE point of view, uh, it's an opportunity. So we, you know, we partner very closely with AWS, with Azure, Google Cloud Compute, and literally dozens of other CSPs around the world. Because as you said, Linux is already in the public cloud, and it is real. So there are enterprise customers uh, all over, all geographies that are embracing public cloud, for the right types of use cases and workloads. And uh, to us, it's becoming a real substantial part of our business. Is it interoperability a big part of that? I mean, when you talk about in clouds, is, so you, do you see more and more deals like what you're doing with Mirantis? Because in a way, there is a need for standardization. That's one of, been one of the problems we saw, certainly in the Hadoop ecosystem. Mm -hmm. you know, the lack of standards has yeah. not only increased the TCO, total cost of ownership, mm -hmm. but Correct. created a huge complexity nightmare on mm -hmm. barriers to entry to get a deployment up and running. Mm -hmm. Standardization is still an issue, it's still, it's still an obstacle. So I think there does need to be more standardization around APIs, uh, there needs to be more standardization around management and security to really make that reality. Yeah. Karmesh, talk yeah. about that because yeah. you yeah. guys have solved that problem around, not solved it, but yeah. you've abstracted yeah. away yeah. some yeah. of the complexities around yeah. lowering the surface area for a customer to get into OpenStack. Yeah, I mean, think of OpenStack as this, this sort of, you know, the whole idea of OpenStack is this open API interface, right? To yeah. your point, it's all about how do I interact with this infrastructure in an automated way, in a scripted way, so I can get, you know, infrastructure provisioning done faster. At the end of the day, who cares about infrastructure? Is infrastructure dead? It's a, it's a controversial topic, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of innovation going on in infrastructure, yeah. but at the end of the day, from a business standpoint, yeah. how do I get value out of this? How do I get my developers productive? How do I get my applications out faster yeah, yeah. so I don't have to wait for my IT guys you know, six weeks yeah. to go give me a server, right? I mean, we want to get away from that. Well, that's a good point. As our Wikibon yeah. analysts say yeah. on our SiliconANGLE team, yeah. OpenStack should be invisible. That's a success point. Exactly. Right? And then to exactly. your point about the yeah. skill set, yes. making it invisible means it's basically an abstracted away to the developer. To the developer. <laughs> the developer only sees the APIs. Yeah, you know, right. I want a server, yeah. I want a network, I want storage, I want yeah. to stitch it all together. Give me 
give it to me, here's a single yeah. call and you're done, right? Well, I gotta, I gotta yeah. say, yeah. OpenStack, yeah. Yeah. the community has zigged and zagged. Yeah. I mean, has, I mean, how many times have we heard the death of OpenStack? I mean, yeah. Yeah. every year, OpenStack's struggling. Mm. It's probably yeah. healthier than ever yeah. now yeah. because mm. the companies have zigged and zagged properly with the trends. Yeah. But there's still a lot of stuff going on under the hood. NFV, SDN, yes. you mentioned yes. some of the work on the yes. APIs, yes. and certainly the business opportunities are great, and we see that. Mm -hmm. Specifically, can you guys share some areas that you see that are being worked on mm -hmm. you know, in the back room by all the developers in the open source community here within OpenStack? Is yeah. it the management piece, is it the yeah. APIs? What yeah. some areas can you point to? So I think, I think management and orchestration yeah. is a big topic, so I think, I would say, and then right behind that is, uh, is containerization. So one of the things that is, is I think made people hesitate to engage with OpenStack over the last year or so is uncertainty around where those technologies are going. Mm -hmm. And I think we're now starting to get together and align yeah. on some of those key technologies. We see mm -hmm. some synergy around Kubernetes for orchestration yeah. is a great example of that. So I wrote a piece about that piece and the Stackernetes, Stackernetes has been a big popular yeah. term. Yeah. What, is, what is that? Yeah, yeah. What is, is it Docker and, <laughs> <laughs> what is so, it? Kubernetes and Docker yeah. and OpenStack? Or? So it's, it's about day two operations, right? We, we talked about it earlier, uh, in fact, um, in the, on the keynote, right? So the issue with OpenStack, I wouldn't call it an issue, but it's really, it's matured to a point where the software works. Right. But now the question is, how do I kind of manage this and scale it and maintain it and, and operate it at hundreds and thousands, of, hundreds and even thousands of nodes, right? That's an unsolved problem, still. So if I were to roll back, you know, or upgrade to a new version of OpenStack across a thousand nodes, and if I run into a problem, how do I roll that back, and how do I monitor the, monitor the whole, whole uh, environment, that is an area that orchestration, automation, at that level. Now Kubernetes, the good news about Kubernetes is that it solved that for containers. That's what it's very good at. So now you have a natural kind of fit between two different communities solving problems of each other. Yeah, right? orchestration problems specifically. Orchestration right. problem uh, specifically, yeah. and, and also the whole life cycle management aspect, yeah. which is what or, you know, Kubernetes is bringing to the table. Yeah. That's great for OpenStack, and OpenStack on the other hand has done a great job bringing this community of vendors and technologies that work well, you know, whether it's networking, storage, uh, or compute, or all these different hypervisors, and that's something that Kubernetes doesn't have. Yeah. So it's right. a great marriage great of two great communities coming together and solving okay. the problem. So in my article yeah. I wrote, I kind of, and also on Twitter, I was basically saying, and on the opening segment here, I said, um, OpenStack community has been a bunch about surviving. Mm -hmm. The whole group have been survivors. Yeah. And, they, and yeah. that's because the community was kind of reset a few years ago, many years ago, mm -hmm. and it was contribution driven, very open source yep, driven, yep, yep. and made the right calls. Mm -hmm. So there's always, after Thrive, there's always, I mean, Survive, there's always a Thrive period. So yeah. I see us kind of on that inflection point of mm -hmm. not only surviving mm -hmm. and being stable and healthy, mm -hmm. but now thriving. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see as that thriving dynamic? What, what's going to make the OpenStack Foundation mm -hmm. and community and the ecosystem thrive to the next level? Well, I think part of it is going to be consensus around key technologies, mm -hmm. like orchestration as an example. So mm -hmm. a movement away from more and more fragmentation and a movement towards standardization around key APIs and key technologies. Yeah. And I think you're starting to see that happen now. I think it's about business outcomes. Um, I have a talk tomorrow actually. We did a, a study with an independent third party company to go talk to some super users hmm. at some of, you know, some of them are running 10,000 nodes. What is their success criteria? How did they go about doing that? And it turns out, and I won't spill all the beans, but you can come and you know, attend our session. What time is the session tomorrow? Uh, it's about, it's at 2.10 in the afternoon. Will it be right? streamed live? Uh, um, I'm not, not sure. sure. We'll not check sure. it out. Yeah, we'll so, so I mean, the, the, key, the, the key challenges we saw was great technology, these guys love to go put together a little POC or a pilot, you know, they maybe have 100 nodes up and running, but then they have a challenge of expanding this further having more and more users and more and more tenants coming yeah. on board, scaling it, running it at scale, and yeah. getting some real business benefits out of it, right? That's kind of where the rubber meets the road, right? Great technology, all these standardization is coming together, orchestration is coming together, but if it doesn't solve a business yeah. problem for a business and they're willing to invest more to, to expand, yeah. it's not going anywhere. I think that's a key cube gem soundbite. We'll have to make sure yeah. we grab that. Yeah. I love that, Michael. I think your comment yeah. about the open APIs and some of the work under the hood, combined yeah. with the business outcome, really yeah. kind of validates the fact that yeah. no cloud's the same. 
Mm -hmm. So yep. every company is not, no, there's no general purpose cloud. Yeah. Hybrid yeah. cloud is essentially yeah. right. custom cloud. Yeah. And that's what customers are doing. That's not yeah. necessarily products, it's what it is, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. a reality. It's a reality. Yeah, it is the and reality. the use case Absolutely. drives it. And yeah. Workloads yeah. drive it. I mean, we're seeing a lot of uh, momentum in yeah. the telco space with all the NFE stuff going on. And they have yeah. specific requirements. They have specific performance requirements, they have specific scale requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Different world, right? And I love this yeah. market. I mean, the yeah. cloud basically, yeah. I love the line I heard on theCUBE, I forget which event it was. The cloud is just a data center that nobody knows where it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is back down yeah. to yeah. an open data center. Open yeah. cloud essentially mm -hmm. brings that concept mm -hmm. to life, which is yeah. it's just a data center, yeah. but it's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. It's right. just you yeah. know, distributed yeah. everywhere. All right, final yeah. thoughts here. I want to get you guys to comment on OpenStack Silicon Valley, this event. What's the big thrust? What do you see coming out of this? What are we going to see tomorrow? What's the big aha, mm -hmm. walk away, bumper mm -hmm. sticker? I think it's all about you know, how do you containerize mm -hmm. OpenStack and how do you solve the, the challenges of operations and lifecycle management uh, and how do you bring the best of the two worlds together? Things that Kubernetes has solved, bringing it to the OpenStack community. Things that OpenStack has solved, bringing it to the Kubernetes community. And then, this is your cloud, right? At the end of the day, you want to be able to operate deploy, manage, roll back, upgrade, and do that all seamlessly at scale. And at scale, I'm not talking 15, 50 nodes or 100 nodes, I'm talking thousands of nodes. Yeah, company-wide, right. production. Company-wide, you know, industry-wide, and Intel has always been touting these right. you know, thousands of clouds for everyone, you know, or cloud for everyone, or whatever. I think Michael, this is the way to get there. Michael, your thoughts? Yeah. So I really liked what Jonathan Bryce said this morning in the keynote about collaboration and interoperability and choice because I think that's really what's necessary to drive the state of the art of OpenStack forward. And I think the Kubernetes collaboration that we've been talking about is a great example of that. But we also need standardization around things like rolling upgrades, we need real world high availability and manageability uh, to get to that yeah. day two scenario. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're now at the point where we need to be well beyond the, I can give a good demo, and we need to get on to those real world uh, implementations. Well, congratulations on your announcement, building, having you. that foundational building blocks, end-to-end -end solid, bulletproof, mm -hmm. at the low level, certainly to enable that outcomes and, yeah. and work on some of the technical features. Michael Kamish, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. This is uh, theCUBE live here in Silicon Valley for OpenStack SV, hashtag OpenStack SV, or the rising hashtag OSSV16, which I think is the official hashtag, but either way, we're tracking it all. If you have any questions, ping us on Twitter on the hashtag or at theCUBE or at Furry. We have to answer your questions or ask your questions. Be right back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>